talking live we very, very short. We are live now as we speak. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Photography Live and Uncut. Um, you know my name, it's Paul Griffiths. Welcome to everyone. My guest today, street photographer from Brisbane, Australia. Yes, live at five o'clock in the morning. Thank you so much for joining me, Teresa Pilcher. Thanks so much for having me here, Paul. That's no problem at it's all. It's great. Yeah, we've got a, if I can just explain to those that are watching uh, and will probably watch the video later, there's a slight delay in in my conversation. Teresa has been saying to me in the in the pre-show that uh, I'm like a ventriloquist dummy at the moment. So the, the sound comes through about two seconds after I've spoken. So I've got to ask my question, delay, and then Teresa's going to pitch in with her answer. So Teresa, it's all about your work today. Thank you again for joining me. Um, let's start off with the question i love to ask everyone can you remember the first camera in your household before you got into photography um we had a compact camera my mum owned it and um a little polaroid that we used to play around with but i remember taking my very first photo at the age of seven and it was just a portrait of my mum on the porch and i just when i held the camera and 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 um, press the shutter. I just knew that I wanted to do this forever. It was yeah. just something I felt. It wasn't something I thought. It just I knew it. It's it's funny how things like that sort of just flick and it starts and it, it's a it's like a it's like a bug, isn't it? It's like everyone sort of picks up a golf club for the first time and starts playing golf and say, "I'm into it." It's a, it's really great. But you went to school and and you carried on taking f uh, photographs really at a young age. A little bit of dark room work at school. We uh, we had a dark room and we had some cameras that we could borrow. So I spent every minute I could in the dark room, just playing around and and just watching the photos appear. And the photos yeah. weren't terribly good, but I just you know just learning about the um, apertures and just really playing with different creative aspects. Mm. It's, really that it's that magical moment isn't it when you see the image starting to come through the developer and then you i, I only did it a few times and I, I used to panic at that point i think i mustn't overdo this i've got to get it into the fixer pretty damn quick but uh, really exciting moments what what <laughs> camera what was the first camera that you bought yes. for yourself after the uh, after the household compact did you what, what camera was that well after playing with these cameras at school, I decided mm -hmm. to buy a Pentax because I was familiar with the Pentax. And I was trying to recall what make it might have been. It looked a bit like the K1000, okay. but I'm not sure if it was that one or a model. But um, I got all nostalgic looking at that on Google search. I thought, oh, yeah, no, it brought yeah. back all those memories of you know the dials and, and the film. Yeah. <laughs> trying to wind the film on properly. We, 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 <laughs> so, yearn, we, we yearn for cameras with dolls and knobs back again. It's all back now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do enjoy the dials on the back. So what, uh, what equipment are you using at the moment now? I think I've owned almost every camera, none to man. So from the Pentax, I went on to Canon. And okay. after Canon, I tried Nikon. Or Nikon, Nikon <laughs> whatever you yeah. want to call it. And then my niece, um, the lovely Tanya Wallace, bought a Sony A7. And I had a play with that. And I just thought this just felt really right. It's the mirrorless yeah. system. So I went into the shop and I asked them all the questions. And yeah, the, the Sony was the one that stood out for me. And do you still um, have your other equipment? It does have you... a very loud shutter. Yeah, yeah, that's I've heard about the shutter. I, I have like a <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame. They do have a new model that is quieter, but it's like yeah. four and a half thousand dollars. So at the moment I'll I'll stay with the A seven and the next camera might be a quieter one. <laughs> yeah, I think uh that's I think that's one thing which people yeah. don't realise because uh, I remember Trey Ratcliffe mentioned this equipment down in New Zealand and in Australia especially is is significantly more expensive than where it would be in say the States or Europe. Mm. It's when uh, you travel it's you get your duty free 
well, um, yeah, allowance. Exactly. What lenses do you have uh, with, with the Sony? Sorry, sorry, I interrupted you there. What lenses do you it's have with the, the Sony? It's a 55. That's all you use. The it's 55. a 55 mil. It's 1.8, yeah. so it's lovely and low light. Yeah. yeah um, I do have this. two other lenses, but I don't right. use them. You don't use them. Are you? Is that? Are they Sony lenses, or they do you use the, uh, the with the an adapter? No, they're both Sony. Both but Sony. I bought them when I was. I might need them, but I just yeah. haven't been inclined to put different lenses on. The fifty-five I, does me. I know exactly where you're coming from because doing street photography, you get used to uh, a, a particular frame and a composition that you're looking for. With you using the full frame, obviously you're 55 mil. I, I tend to love the 35 mil in a in a in a crop uh, sensor camera, the Fuji that I use. So that's around about 50, 51 mil, that sort of size as well. So I can understand that you get used to a particular frame uh, and a composition uh, scenario, and, and it suits. And you and you don't want to you don't want to change that, do you? You don't want to sort of start taking one lens off, putting on another, and, and then changing back. Occasionally, you do need a wider lens, but I bought the um, Fuji mirrorless, and that's got the wider lens on it. So if I okay. if I'm traveling and I wanted to do different types of shots, I can always use that. Okay. I just needed one as a backup. Yeah, <laughs> what Fuji was that you bought? Um, it's the XT10. Okay, yeah, know it very well. So. I that put that after, like, after I was over with Valerie, and yeah, yeah. I was looking at hers. Has yes, very uh, quiet Pete, shutter. Was that was that the workshop where Karen was? Uh, Karen Hutton was with you as well. It was. She was yeah. my buddy. Yeah, Karen. <laughs> Karen. Uh, we, we had to look out for each other. <laughs> I, I saw. I saw the uh, the a blogging by Karen with regards to the uh, that she was switching or, or she was starting to use Fuji. And I sent her a quick uh, email because yes. I had inter interviewed her before, and I said, "Look, please, if there's any chance we could talk about your your interest in Fuji cameras, she said, certainly. I'm just going to to Paris with uh, with Valerie, and then when I come back, I'll I'll be happy to come on your show." And, and she did, and we we talked about the XT1 and the XT10, and it turned out also that she'd sneaked in an X30, I think, or an X X. She'd been given quite a lot of gear from Fuji to use, and uh, so it was a really interesting conversation. Um, but let's get back to the Sony because it is, jealous, it, yes. yeah, it is a it is a loud camera for street photography. The uh, the, the Sony because you can't switch that shutter noise off. Mm. Have you had any problems with mm. that? Uh, not really. I I quite enjoy having people engage with my camera. So if sure. they do see that I'm there, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, I used to prefer to be really silent and and stealth yeah <laughs> but now i just do what i do and if they stare at me i sometimes i i like that <laughs> it it creates a connection between you and the person that's the main thing about street photography a lot of people ask me the same thing oh i'm very careful i'm i'm really worried when people approach me london is one of these cities which i think it, it's okay now about four or five years ago i think there was a lot of uh, incidences especially with security guards <clears throat> i've noticed recently some comments being made in paris and in germany where people are starting to get a little bit sort of annoyed by street photographers but um i think the one thing about it you made a good point there is the engagement if you are open and you talk to people and allow people to approach you then you don't really get the problems do you mm. it's all about the vibe you're putting out the energy yeah and I just I look like a tourist. I'm taking photos of everything. <laughs> so people don't usually look at me twice, that's, but if they yeah. do, I, I get a photo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I, so I when, advantage if they notice me. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did street photography really sort of kick off for you? Um, I didn't actually start street seriously until about 18 months ago when I applied to the Arcanum needed to choose a genre to to um, specialize in 
and I was looking through all the genres and I thought street resonated most with with my thinking so mm -hmm. I, I wrote that as my genre and I couldn't find a street cohort to um, study in right. but that didn't stop me I just kept working out Ebling on all sorts of genres like um, photographing nudes and, and mm -hmm. portraiture and eventually I just realized that street was it for me mm -hmm. It was it was my passion, and about eighteen months ago, I got my Sony, and that was it. From from that day on, I was just focused on street completely. Mm -hmm. so. That's an interesting comment you make there with regards to you. You get a camera, you feel totally at home with it, and all of a sudden, a particular genre clicks, and it starts to work. It, that's exactly what happened with me when I switched from Nikon to Fuji. Um, I basically, I've yeah. said this many times before, getting the Fuji for me was like finding photography again. It was just a, a, you know, a, a big eye opener and, and, uh, uh, and I've gone on from there. Teresa, let's, uh, because I, I, it's a brand new website. I think you've, how long, how long has this website been live now? Sort of, uh, quite a short time, really. I live just before uh, December last year. December. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's been a huge learning curve, just getting it all yeah, together and get, logging. Getting it right, you're quite right. Get it right, getting the right text and everything. I, I, I must say, and I'm not saying this because you're online and that we're our Canon mates or pals or uh, apprentices, but I think it's a great website. I really do. I think you've uh, you've got the right balance, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, your the, the images which you're showing on it are are just absolutely superb <clears throat> what i want to do first of all before we go to the to the uh, to the portfolios let's let's show the viewers um uh what uh, uh what you've got on your site here which i think is a great idea um you basically your front page is is your blog page so in actual fact you're making reports here and writing you're very kindly put up our, our live event today which is which is very kind of you thank you for that but I think this is a great way of showing your interest. You're, you're prepared to write and you're prepared to put some images with those those blogs. And I just just give an example here, give meaning to the world and click on read me or read more. Sorry. And that takes you into another page. And uh, Teresa's here um, waiting for the page to load. Um, has done some work here. As you can see, she is a huge, huge fan of Henri Cartier-Bresson. And in actual fact, I've got to be honest with you. I think it shows in your work uh, where you've got this, um, you got the, you've got the eye for street photography, and it and it does lead from uh, the fantastic work of uh, HCB himself. So, congratulations to that. Um, <clears throat> let's go Thank to the portfolio. You. We want to we want to start off with Paris because this is sort of in in time scale. You've got two very very good portfolios on here: one Paris and one of Rome. And um, <clears throat> let's go to Paris first, because uh, this is the one where you went uh, with, with Valerie. But Valerie's, uh, let's, if you wouldn't mind explaining for me, uh, Teresa, Valerie's workshop was in the middle of a period of time you were there. Is that correct? I spent 11 nights in Paris, and we um, stayed at an Airbnb. So when, when Valerie invited me, she had one spot left, and I was umming and ahhing, and then I just thought, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to go to Paris with someone who's French and knows the city. So hmm. I decided to jump in and go with her. We did a six day workshop and I pretty much hit the streets for 12 hours a day. <laughs> I was up at first light and they were very long days. It was like daylight at 4.30 in the morning. So we, we'd be out about 8 a.m. 8 and we wouldn't finish until nearly midnight. <laughs> yeah, I always remember. I was very fortunate to speak yeah. to Karen Hutton after this, and she said that one particular day you guys went out. I think you were around the Notre Dame area, and she said she's looking at everything in that from a landscaper's point of view because Karen does these beautiful landscapes, and she sort of frowning and I'm in an R in, and Valerie went up to her and said, "Look for the light, Karen. Look for the light." Yes, and. It, you know, this is something which I've just done a workshop with some guys, uh, local guys. And I think it's when you, when you in actual fact, realize light in, in, on the street, it's when street photography comes alive. 
um, recognizing light and shadow. And uh, you've got this in, in uh, all of your images where you've appreciated the light and the shadow. Um, for instance, let me just go back to this one here. I, I love the expression of this guy's face here. Absolutely love it. And yet you've got these two down here walking away. And then you know where the place is because of the Eiffel Tower. How did you take that shot? That was taken about 9 p.m. at night and we were waiting for a bus. Um, the bus was delayed. So this man was actually pacing. Right. I just focused on his back. And as he turned, I captured that expression. And I didn't know what his expression might be, but it was just perfect for me because yeah. he was walking out of the frame. And um, they're actually joggers in the background. So it just it captures that time of the night for me and the Eiffel Tower is like the little icing on the it is, yeah. cherry exactly on the top. Right. It is. You've, got, yeah. the, you've mentioned about the evening. Of course, I can see now these these dots yeah. of light here, which are obviously from the traffic lights and the and the street lights. Lovely capture. But Paris Again. is so wonderful. There's, oh, it is. there's stories on every corner. Every corner, every bar, every cafe. And uh, it's a great shame at the moment. I there's took a lot of, so many photos. Yeah, there's a great shame at the moment. Yeah. A lot of people are walking around sad. with with a little bit of trepidation as regards to how we uh, how they go about their life. But uh, fingers crossed, it gets back to uh, normality for them. But again, look at this shot here: light and shadow. If my guys from the workshop is watching it, like I hope they are, this is an absolute classic of using and realizing light and taking the image. A little bit of shadow work, beautiful light subject lovely shot lovely shot this and was um taken late at night so i was standing in the shadows yeah and um i just love the faces the yeah. i've written a blog about faces as focus points yeah so your eye moves from face to face and there's so many there there's even reflections of of, of the lady's face on the far right yeah. that i didn't even see until i was writing the blog no that's very so true, yeah. i like photos to have high impact but i like them to have nuances as well so that people if they want to look longer they'll they'll find things like little and hidden things that are quite nice <laughs> yeah and this is with the sony with the 55 mil lens um i think this in actual yes. fact shows you the quality All of, my of the sony photos in, in, the, in the low light operation i think that's a, a, a one of the big uh, advantages of, of the sony's although saying that i think the fuji's yes. operate that well as well but <clears throat> Great image, love that one. Um, uh, that's obviously at the same. I bar. love the fact they're allowed to smoke. In the yeah, cafes. exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To smoke. yeah. You don't get that in Australia. No. This guy was funny. He was glaring at me, what trying to work out what I was doing, and yeah. the other guys trying to get his attention. <laughs> and there's, and there's so a smoker. In, there's a smoker in the back, top left. Who's also either on a mobile phone there or scratching mm -hmm. his beard, and I think he's also spotted you taking the photograph. Uh, There's lots going on there. Lots he was on. one of the workers. And he was. Yeah. He was on his coffee break, so yeah, exactly or a cigarette right. break. So yeah. I think he might have been on the phone. <clears throat> and that's the past, same guy. <laughs> I've walked past. Yeah, I've walked past this restaurant. I, I remember it. The Comptoir du Pantheon. I've walked yeah. past that. Uh, Pantheon. Um, it's just a magical time of night, too. It is, yeah. Uh, interesting. I go back to that. You don't this, do a lot of color images, but this one pops out at me. Could you tell me the reason why you left it at color? I actually wrote a blog on this one as well. Um, right. It's called The Blue Hour, and it's just yep. about when the sun set and, and the light, how it changes. So. What, what we're seeing here is just obviously the, the high saturation of the um, blue in the shadows yeah. and then the really nice contrast with the, the ambient lights of the street. Yeah. Nice one. Um, I do prefer black and white, obviously, yeah, yeah. but occasionally I'll, I'll leave one in colour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to, just to it just pop the depends on the image. Yeah, exactly right. Um, uh, I love this. Caught the guy reading his book and the statues watching him. Uh, well, well spotted. Well spotted. Yeah. Well spotted. It's that that relation. And there again, guys walk past, and the guys guys look. look he's looking. He's, uh, yeah. 
I like to use invisible lines in my images. Yeah, exactly. So right. that the statue watching the man is my yeah. invisible line, and then you've got other aspects. But the the characters yeah. were just fabulous. Yeah, like I could photograph them all day, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just uh, clicking through the, the wonderful metro entrances all through Paris. <clears throat> is that the Champs Elysees? Uh, yes, it is. It is, yes. yeah, possibly. Yeah. I'm Get I'm quite a minimalist, there. but I was I was trying to um, do a bit more with complexities and layers. Yeah. But most of my Paris photos are quite simple. I love the reflection on the water here. This is, you know, I've always said this about the Louvre. Who would in, in any in any other city in the world would put a glass pyramid in the middle of a square when you've got this beautiful uh, uh, old palace, in actual fact, as it was, uh, before they switched it over to a museum? Uh, no other country would ever consider it apart from in Paris, in France, in Paris. It's amazing. I love this image, and and it's really uh, makes you makes you look around and looking at the architecture, and then all of a sudden, you see two individuals just caught again working light and shadow and detail on the left hand side there. Uh, this is about the only time of day you'll find it empty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. During right. the day, it's just crazy busy. It's just mobbed. Yeah. It's just mobbed. Yeah, exactly right. And that's a very nice shot as well. I love the sepia tone and the way you've enhanced the lady. What were they doing? They were next? having a photo shoot, but they were just testing the lighting. Um, oh, okay. They, I'm not sure if she was getting married because red can right. be a popular colour for Asian marriages. Yes. But yeah. I just loved the splash of red in the corner. Lovely. We'll just do a couple more. Beautiful and this is, uh, location. Love, yeah, it's fantastic. Paris is absolutely fantastic. And uh, a cheeky one to finish, excuse the pun. <laughs> I would imagine that must be around about the Montmartre area. Uh, that was actually where I was staying in the Latin Quarter. Oh, okay. Right we, um, we were like in the student area, so... Happy yep. hour went from about 4 p.m. to midnight. <laughs> to exactly. close. Fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. was just a great area to, to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, I just uh, there's one image there which uh, I wanted to show as well, which uh, <clears throat> was this one, which is uh, atypical of a Paris scene in terms of the statue on top of the. Is that on top of the Notre Dame or the Sacre Coeur? No. Not a. Which one? Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yeah, I thought it was. And there's uh, it was the Notre Eiffel Dame. Tournament. Yeah, yeah. Great. So we'll come out you of that You have to one. get the touristy shots as well. You do, you, you do, yeah, exactly right. You have to do that and get it, get it in your portfolio. But I think what there is for fact, as I've said before, which is coming across here, is, is your work with light and shadow in your images, uh, which I think a lot of people that do street photography and, and post a lot to Instagram and Flickr and, and those sort of sites don't understand that. They have a tendency to just fire the image away and, and, uh, and not take into consideration the, 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 the nuances of, of quality street photography. This is a lovely shot in Rome. Um, Thank you. Is me. I try to shoot with intent. Um, yep. make, making sure that my composition and my subjects are exactly where I want them. Yeah. So as if it was a painting and everything in the painting should be there. Yeah. For for a purpose. So um, using different motifs like light and shadow. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Rome. Rome, I captured a lot of cobblestones and umbrellas. <laughs> there was there was different motifs. I didn't set out with a theme, but the shop windows was another one. Yeah. That he was a fabulous staircase. He, he obviously saw you, this guy. 
He did. <laughs> but he just seems so timeless. He could have been yeah. out of the 60s. Well, that's exactly right. You know, he looks like nothing. a um, waiter yeah. on his break. Even even the uh, the, the uh, mannequins in the uh, in the window there don't give any uh, sort of um, uh, indication of the time aspect uh, that it was 2015. You know, it could be as you say, it could be 50s, 60s, quite easily. The um, the style in Rome is just fabulous. People yeah. dress so well. They um, do every day of the week. <laughs> yes. which is very yeah. different to Brisbane. Yeah, they, 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 it's almost an insistence on being smart at all times. Even I even remember bus drivers and uh, some, uh, you know, that sort of thing were smart, you know. It's uh, quite amazing. When you look around, there's so much... Uh, <clears throat> look, look, this is a classic example I'm talking about. The buildings have basically seen better days, yet all the people are smart. <laughs> I love the buildings as backdrops. Oh, There's yeah. so much history, and 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 the walls are all faded and peeling. Yeah, plaster it, falling it's off the wall. Jean Darmery walking down here. I'm surprised they didn't come up and have a chat with you, actually. But yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> I they don't normally in. take policemen, but no, that was exactly. just too. Um, I was, was going to say sometimes too they're inviting. They're a bit funny, the gendarmerie. Some minutes they can be so jokey and friendly, and the next thing they can be quite aggressive. So, and and again, you see, you're talking about invisible so, lines. Look at this expression and this lady's face as she's reading a book. You mean it's a case of what are you doing? Why, why are you reading <laughs> a book now? I like my subjects. I, I focus on subjects more than anything. Uh, yeah. When I see a subject, I look for a good, good expression or something to happen. And um, yeah, I just I enjoyed the the kind of interplay between these three ladies who are obviously and, just sitting yeah. there waiting. Well timed, well timed shot. It's a case that you see it, bang, you got to take it, and then you know you can see what uh, what's happening there. If you think about it, you've missed it. I'm I'm just waiting for something to happen. So when I'm yeah. I'm looking at the subjects, just waiting for that small nuance of of an expression or a gesture. People on phones, you can't escape them. But this you one just seems to I work. Know. I know it's amazing. <laughs> he's listening and he's he's texting. Amazing. And as you say, uh, this yeah. day and age. The people, uh, that's so, well, uh, nearly everyone's on the mobile phone. You know, it's it's uh, just quite amazing. Again, you time this well with this lady who's got her hand out there, and the guy's walking past. The expression of you know where you're going. I've even got a dog, going. dog and looking even, through his legs. Yeah, exactly. He just caught him there. Exactly. <laughs> I can just see the tongue hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> There's I some fabulous that. people in Rome. Just yeah, oh, so, everywhere. So, so stylish, so stylish. And I'm just going to stop it here because uh, I, I'm going to move on to other images. But this one is because, uh, again, talking to my uh, workshop, we were talking about vignettes on on work, and I can see here you've done this <clears throat> this vignette all around the corners and the edges, and that that is so important. So. For any of my workshoppers that are watching this video at a later stage, <clears throat> this is the classic example as what I'm saying to concentrate your, your, your viewer into your subject matter, which is these two, I'm um, assuming they're priests walking away from uh, Teresa's image, the use of the vignette around the side. If that was open, uh, you, you would lose it. Uh, you'd lose the concentration of the center of the image. Lovely shot there, priest down at the bottom here, lovely. Or a warden of some nature. It was actually St. Peter's Basilica. Um, oh, it is, is it? Wow. At first light, they they open it at seven in the morning, so okay. you can get there and it's empty and it's just amazing. There's Seriously. priests everywhere. There's yeah. there's like twenty different masses going on all at once. <clears throat> are you are you allowed to take photographs in there? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> There's tourists everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't normally take photos of masses and things like that, but no. 
Yeah, the priests are fair game. Yeah. Low light again, <laughs> shadow, detail, light. Love it. Absolutely love it. The quality of light in Italy is just amazing. It, it's all about the geography and it's it just it, the slant of the the light. It just, it's just it's soft, it, but it's also exactly right. You make a very good point because uh, I've been to Rome a few times, and I, obviously uh, you know that there's the Rome. I suppose is sort of as similar as you could possibly get to London in terms of the higher buildings and and the uh, the narrow lanes and streets which obviously allows for all the shadows that, that are occurred. <clears throat> Paris is a little bit different because there's only a very a tall area, a high area in Paris, which is down at the La, La Defense area. So you don't get, um, you have to really look, I think, for the light and the shadow detail in, in Paris, whereas Rome, it lends itself to that. The um, street had um, the sun just at the end of that street. So awesome backdrop shooting yeah. into the light and just the really great shadows so many images yeah <laughs> unbelievable i'm going to come out of that uh teresa it's absolutely uh, as i've mentioned before uh A fantastic website, a really well put together. I like the style, and uh, <clears throat> if you put a third port portfolio, I, I suppose you're probably going to have to work at some way of reducing those numbers on that, so you don't have too many. But I, I don't know how you're going to do it because you've got some fantastic images there. And obviously, the idea now is to carry on with the blogging and um, and sort of write sort of journalistic type reports. Yeah. Yes. Um, just I'm learning this genre and okay. as i learn it i'm i'm looking at it like the things things i'm finding on the street that that work um just about technical things okay i'm, I'm not How a technical you... photographer but well i think in actual fact an interesting point I do... i've read to, uh, heard today in actual fact probably getting too technical with photography will spoil the the actual the thinking side of photography in terms of uh, the creation and the composition I agree. I, I like to keep my camera out of the creative process, so just keeping it simple and just focusing on the composition. And this comes round to basically when you've got the camera in your hand, the Sony in your hand with the 55, it suits your style. You're now basically the camera has become part of you and you're just you're free to do the composition with your, with your uh, with your images. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when the camera becomes intuitive, you don't have to think about the camera. That's when your creative process just kicks in and mm. you can be completely free with that camera. Yeah. It becomes part of your, your mind and your process. So. I notice the, um, on the on the website, sorry to interrupt you. Notice on the website though, there's no imagery of uh, Australian cities or towns. Is this something which you're going to develop later, or is it? Do you find it awkward to actually shoot in your own backyard, as one would put it? I do have photos from Brisbane. Um, Brisbane is a little bit difficult to shoot in. The architecture is not really stunning there's a bit of old buildings and new buildings and it just it, it's a bit jarring having mm -hmm. said that it's a great place to practice yeah like i, I go out every week and i take photos okay. um not that many will make my portfolio unfortunately <laughs> but um when i travel i i just i feel like i embrace the city and that's that's when i'm at my best yeah so the the photography is not your full time profession. Uh, what do you do uh, to put the 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 penny the, the bread on the table? What, what's your uh, your your employment? That's the word I was looking for. Uh, I work in the medical field, and oh, okay. I work with memory memory impaired. Persons, so it's challenging and rewarding, and yeah. it's casual, so I can travel as often as I like. 
Well, that's so that's that's a it's, great. It's a great thing. job. They pay yeah. me well, and uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. And and uh, let's let's switch now to uh, to the Arcanum. Um, where where are you at, at present in the Arcanum uh, levels as as uh, we as we talk? I'm on level twenty six as we speak. Um, I'm in sphere two with AD Wheeler, okay. and this this sphere is all about developing web websites, blogging, and social media. So what we're doing is we're learning to get our photos into the public, which yeah. has been ch uh, like a challenge just learning to blog because I know Wordsmith, I, I don't write well. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd realised in English I, I was going to be doing this, I would have paid much more attention. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't we all? Um, wouldn't we all? <laughs> but having said that, I'm passionate about getting my ideas. It's like if they aren't well written, the ideas are, you know, yeah. all, all I'm doing is getting my work out at the moment and um, promoting my photos. So, okay, let's let's talk about that then because I think social media is a very important part of what we're doing. <clears throat> um, where are you uh, sending out your work? What, what are you concentrating in terms of what, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What uh, tools are you using for, the, for your social, social media activity? There's so many platforms that I never realised existed. <laughs> But um, Google Plus and, and Facebook are obviously the big two. Yeah. And Twitter is, is very popular, even though I've never tweeted before. It, it's um, interesting to see that so many people are on there and, and they, they're tweeting all day. <laughs> yeah, they are. So, yeah, yeah just learning, learning the platforms and, and how they work because each platform is very different to each other. Yeah, that's a very you know. good point, actually. I think... On, on, I think there's some areas where, in terms of blogging, uh, where you may be doing a blog on WordPress and then a blog on Blogger and then on Medium and then on Hello. The list is endless, as we spoke before the show. But each one has a different nuance, a different approach, and a different audience. Um, same applies to Flickr and obviously twit uh, Twitter and uh, and even Facebook is different from Google Plus. Um, it's uh, you, you you can't just sort of send one post out. And it goes to all. It, it just doesn't work. Well, on Google Plus and Facebook, I'm sharing an image a day. So yeah, I'm getting my photos out to the public. And I'm really surprised what a great um, response I've had with the website. So many people are commenting on my blogs and, and actually engaging with me. Um, about the topics it's fabulous like yeah I didn't expect it I thought maybe two or three people might read them and um, my first blog had 460 odd shares so fantastic it kind of surprised me that people are so into street because I knew it was a growing genre but I didn't realize mm. just how popular it is it, it is quite and, amazing um, I, I, think I haven't seen too many blogs I, I'm sorry to interrupt you there because I was just going to say I think the reason why street photography is exploding for one of description is the fact that everyone has has the has the the iPhone with them or uh, or the uh, smartphone but of course then uh, you take the next step up because yes. once you've once you've taken an interest using the iPhone then of course the next step is to get yourself a, a, a good <clears throat> a, a better camera um, either a compact or, or a, a mirrorless camera to, to take it stage further. And there's, there's no doubt about it, street photography, I, well, it's never been so popular, never been so popular. I moderate a community and we're adding about a thousand members a week. Are you really? Which is phenomenal. We have over 300,000 members. <laughs> and wow. the thing that I hear most from the members is they want to learn. So that's my next step is to try and set up some mentorships that they can yeah. learn. Just the basic um, composition strategies, how to see yeah. light, things that you talk about on your show. So that's so, the next step from here. That's an interesting point you make there. So you you actually set up a, uh, set up this group, and, and you say three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. I'm one of the wow. moderators. Um, I'm not the owner, but no, no. It is a so, huge task. We have 
hundreds of images a day. And where and where are those photographers? Are all around the world? I take it, or just Australia? Absolutely. Yeah. All and around the world. We've got some very high quality con content all over the world. Yeah. That's amazing. We've got people from Moscow, America, Europe. It's Asia. It's just phenomenal. Just seeing so many different photos from and, and, different places. And, and, and what? Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the what site do you go through on that? Is it a Flickr site, base site, or Google Plus, or uh, Google Plus Street yeah, Photographers Google. Community? Oh yes, yes, and, of course. Um, I think I've got a fantastic group of moderators. I think you sent me an invite, actually. Um, I just remembered that. And uh, my moderators do amazing work, mm -hmm. both photographically and in the community it's just inspiring to see the quality in the last two or three months has just skyrocketed skyrocketed it's just phenomenal there is, like we're, it, we're getting really good photographers there uh, it, 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 I, I don't think we it's a tip of the iceberg in actual fact what's out there in terms of what we see i came across a photographer today i've never heard of him before his name's david yarrow <clears throat> he's a he's a nature and wildlife photographer and he's just purely 100% amazing photographs. These are photographs not taken high in, a, in some kind of a truck or a, or a lorry. These are actually taken down on the ground. You know, he's got a charging rhinos, lions, tigers, all sorts of stuff. And I feel like just, we just, there's just so many quality photographers out there of all genres, which we would never ever get to know who they are like it was in the old days when, when we know who the best were at that in those days. There's just so many out there now. And we're promoting people as they come to Google Plus. We'll highlight their work. We'll, we'll add them as a top street and pin them to the top of the just to get their profile um, out Lovely. out there for them. So it's we're getting more and more people joining. So it's it's gonna <coughs> it's gonna um, explode um, soon. <laughs> yeah, if it hasn't already, by the sound of things. What what's the what's yeah, the genre? Is, yeah. is it street photography? It is street photography, isn't it? Yes, we don't accept Definitely. images without subjects, so there's no urban and no still life, it's just street. Street. Yeah. And where it's do you a, draw... It's a great you, community. And where do you draw the line on street, though? Has it got to have what we term as the human form in the image, or are you happy with architectural type, urban type photography? Um, in that community, we ask for subjects and, and a human element. And then, um, yeah. That's how it was set up when I arrived. Yeah. Yeah. So the owner made that rule, and yeah. we, we've just gone with that because there are so many people posting street scenes. Yeah. And cityscapes, and it's just you, you've got to, you know, draw the line somewhere. Yes, you have. And, and even I, though some. And I think you've some done images it the right are brilliant. Way. They, they I, th just, I think the uh, the moderators have done it the right way by saying <clears throat> human element involved in street photography, which I think is where you draw the line. Street photography it requires the human element. Yeah. Urban is is the architectural type work or lanes and dust carts and that sort of thing, and graffiti. There are other communities that accept graffiti and and urban yeah. photography. So there are yeah. other um, places people can post if they want to. That's lovely. That's lovely. Now, come to the time of this show where a lot of uh, my guests sort of tend have a tendency to balk at the question, but I think we're going to have a nice little conversation. Who's your favourite photographer? Uh, without a doubt, it has to be Henry Cartier Bresson. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just no, loved his work I, when I first saw it. He's just amazing, isn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> I it don't just, really know what, when I first saw an image. I just fell in love. I agree with you. I think when you actually sit down and you actually look at the quality of the work and then you take into consideration the equipment that he was using, uh, I think that just goes to show what a good eye for an image that he had. He used the Leica 15mm. Yeah. And I didn't realise that until after I'd bought my camera and my lens, but I just connect with that, that dreamscape that he produces and the strong compositions, the 
fascinating subjects. Everything about his work, it just draws me in and it's imprinted on my brain. I don't have mm. to look at the photos to know exactly every detail of the photo because I've just studied them and, and they're in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, is there any other photographer, though, that you would say, uh, you know, that you would sort of say he's also had an input into your uh, into your style of work? I don't follow street photographers so much because I don't want them to influence my work. Um, okay. When I was growing up, I, I loved Ansel Adams and Edward Weston. Yeah. Robert Maplethorpe. Um, Man Ray yep. and Annie Libovich. I can't say her <laughs> surname. Um, Annie Libovich. I just love their work. Yeah. I think there's I, one other. I love their work. One other photographer I've mentioned in that group. Uh, I, I go, I'll, I'll mention Eugene Atgay, which is a Parisian uh, photographer. Brassai as well did a lot of work in Paris. Uh, and Brassai is, uh, I've got a book of his, uh, in actual fact, the, his images of Paris are just. So a lot of them taken at night time. Uh, and if you think about it, he probably was taking those with either a, a six by four or a 10 by eight camera in those days. There, were, uh, there was no real handheld Leicas around when he was taking the images. So that, that's quite interesting. But another photographer, which I'm <clears throat> really getting into now, Joel, Joel Meyerowitz uh, in New York, who uh, started off with a Leica, um, but then of course switched to a 10 by eight. Uh, working in color with the with the uh, ten by eight frame, so he's uh, he's another photographer which uh, <clears throat> does street photography with a ten by eight, which when you think about it is is quite an interesting subject matter. Who would you say? It sounds uh, um, crazy, doesn't it? It does indeed. It does indeed. Um, I think in actual fact, to use a ten by eight walking around uh, Ground Zero just after nine eleven, he was one of the few photographers allowed okay. to go in there. So, uh, wow. yeah, his work okay. is uh, quite awesome. Well, who would you say, uh, Teresa, has been your inspiration in photography? That's a good question. I don't have any one person that I would mention, but I was watching a video recently on the art of the image and that just really struck me. It's about getting your inspiration from all different sources. It's not for particularly looking at photography, but it's looking at art, music, it's looking at movies, directors, and just seeing their creative processes, even writers, mm -hmm. and just really understanding the creative process and how to see the world differently. So I feel like I've been working on my style and developing my style, and now that I have, I'm probably interested in studying other street photographers, but yeah. up to now I've just been kind of immersed in in the creative process. Yeah, and you make a very good point there in actual fact because we talked about this before. I think when you start off in the Arcanum, it's, it's all guns blazing, getting involved and taking photographs and having your work critiqued. <clears throat> you get through the first, the foundation in sphere one and then and I think they've done this uh, the right way in terms of now getting someone, the, the, the apprentice, to concentrate uh, and to work on a particular direction. Not necessarily on your work, but as AD's done with you to start, you know, getting your work out there. Jessica with me is to concentrate on developing this show and my workshops and, and uh, to develop a business down that route. And I think this is, uh, I think some of the guys who in actual fact completed Sphere 1, I think that's where uh, they didn't quite follow through with regards to how the Arcanum could work for them. I think there is a, um, a tendency in street photography for people to copy. Yeah. They, they see a strong idea and then you'll see hundred more images similar to that and I guess that's the main reason my inspirations aren't photographic so yeah I think finding your own voice that, that it, that's the biggest challenge for photographers out there and I like to see people who are very unique I like to see work that is it, it explains their personality rather than just taking silhouettes or 
high impact images. They're beautiful, but I like to see part of the person in the photos. Yeah. So my inspiration comes from my community. The photographs there are, are awesome. Yeah. That's a great, uh, that's a great point you make there. Um, <clears throat> I was going to ask you one other question there, and it's completely gone straight out of my brain. I can't remember it was. Sorry. No, no, don't worry. Don't worry. It always happens. It always happens somewhere <laughs> down the line. But uh, no, but, I can't remember. So, but the Arcanum gonna... is wonderful. Well, yeah, this, you see, <clears throat> the Arcanum, so much I think, that it helps you develop your own style. It does. I think, in actual fact, it's probably one of the best learning learning tutor programs that you could be involved with, to be quite honest with you, um, because of the style and the way it was set up having this this uh, apprenticeship line up a cohort and then you have the opportunity to have your work mentored i think that some guys originally when they joined it they thought they were going to be able to tag on to the uh, to the master at, at every given time and that's not the way it works um you you can learn so much more yeah. from your fellow apprentice uh, than you can uh, uh, as well as having the top up the cherry on the cake so to speak of the of the master and I think my work improved a hundredfold after I joined the Arcanum. Yeah. Up till then, I didn't understand the um, art of, of the image. Like it was all f-stops, ISOs, you know, getting things sharp. And then you realise when you join the Arcanum, that's the small part. The big part is how to see differently. You go yeah. out into the world and you've got million possibilities and what to focus on and what actually is of interest to you and and then just going down that line and, and actually following that path yeah and, and, and being confident in in who you are <laughs> yeah and, and also the community that you built uh, you build within within that cohort the people that you meet there's not just person just around the corner like a normal camera club you know, look yeah. at us. I'm, we're talking to each other on the other side of the world, and uh, this is would be a quite, um, you know, quite a usual thing to happen with people involved in the Arcanum. Obviously, dependent where the master chooses his uh, apprentices, but uh, it is quite an amazing, uh, amazing setup. And I've, I've I've said this before. I learned more in five days uh, of being in the Arcanum than I did a five years of being at a, a camera club. Um, yeah, I had my work critiqued at camera clubs, but I didn't learn um, from fellow apprentices and, and uh, you know, given the, the small guidances. It's really been uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, and uh, if anyone's thinking out there, what's this Arcanum all about? Just go to thearcanum.com and uh, you'll find, uh, find all the details there for you. Uh, it is an amazing experience to be involved with. Teresa, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we've had a delay all the way through, which is understandable because Australia is probably just about waking up now. So more people are getting online. It is. <laughs> Luckily, um, we didn't have the cricket on or we wouldn't have had any signal. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. There's no cricket on just yet. Thank goodness for that. Um, so, but yeah, no, that's you. good. Um, thank you so much for joining, uh, joining me today. Uh, my evening your morning um been great talking to you congratulations on your website it's a fantastic website superb images and uh, uh all the best for you in the future levels uh, with the arcanum um i've got a walkabout coming up uh, this sunday uh, i'm going to uh, meet up in london so if there's any uh, uk viewers and they're in london why not come and join me at half past 12 in brick lane uh, we're going to uh, walk around the uh, city there and uh, see if we can get something close to what Teresa can produce. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Suffice to say, <clears throat> if you're out there shooting this weekend, please, please leave your camera bag at home. All the best to you. Bye for now.